So, uh, a very hot and a nice warm afternoon uh, to all of you all. Uh, hopefully, just like the weather, we'll also try and make it like really hot here and we'll, we'll hopefully have a very hot discussion. Uh, so, we, interesting topic. Uh, everybody's talking about connected TV growth and, and uh, its benefits uh, and AI. It's, it's another uh, sort of uh, big, big agenda for our industry. Uh, and uh, we are going to combine both. Uh, so what I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll just start off with, uh, you know, just initial thoughts. And then we'll, we'll uh, discuss it further. So uh, just in order, uh, Jatin, if you can just talk about connected TV first. And uh, like, what do you think the role of AI on connected will be? Thank you for... Hello? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Is this okay? Okay, perfect. I can't hear myself, so I don't know what's happening. Uh, but, you know, thank you for having me. I, I think, Jay, you know, uh, before I talk about connected TV and, uh, and, and, and the role that it plays now and what's going to happen in the future, I think it's a little more context setting for L'Oreal and for our industry where, the, where connected TV comes from there, right? So if you look at beauty in India, it's not a very highly penetrated uh, uh, industry, right? I mean, today still for us in a population of around 1.4 billion that you have in the country for us, beauty as a beauty as an industry, et cetera, is anywhere around 250 million to 300 million. Now, when you look at it from a purely from a number perspective, it is huge, but when you look at what the country is right now, it's, it's, it's sort of a finding a needle in a haystack uh, kind of a proposition. So, uh, and you know, with beauty as a, as a format increasing and, you know, sort of pivoting through newer gestures, etc. I mean, if I ask the women in the, in the room, I don't know how many of y'all sort of have a regime that y'all look at, right? From uh, in initially years ago, beauty effectively was just, okay, kajal, lipstick, beauty is done. But now if I, if I just do a uh, random uh, poll here, uh, if I can know how many women in the room have sort of a morning regime and a night regime. Do you have both? I mean, if, by a show of hands. So it, clearly you can see that that's, that's something that's evolving, right? So um, how you use a serum, how you use a moisturizer, etc. sort of becomes very important. And I think that's where CTV comes for us, very important, uh, uh, plays an important role. Now, why I say that is, the last panel obviously spoke about how important linear TV is, and you know, that's something one cannot avoid. But when it comes to us finding our audience, and you know, finding that 250 million, uh, CTV plays a very important role. And I think the reason it, that happens also is because CTV allows you to give uh, the, the amazingness of the big screen, but with the precision of digital, right? I mean, the, the always it's always been, when it comes to TV, it's always been a straight buy. There's, okay, you're buying channels, you're buying sports, et cetera, but what CTV gives us, and for us as L'Oreal, we've always been at the forefront, you know, we, we believe this point of seize what is starting. So uh, I strongly believe, and I know for a fact that we are one of the first few advertisers who have sort of taken that leap into CTV, making sure that we understand how to use CTV, work with our partners, uh, uh, publishers, advertisers, etc., to understand how is it that we can improve our potential uh, potential on CTV. So for for us as L'Oreal, yes, CTV plays a very important role. Uh, uh, today, most of our brands are digital only brands. Uh, whether and when you look at the brands that we have, whether it's uh, Maybelline, L'Oreal Paris, etc., it's the the target audience that we have is digital first, is on CTV. So. Um, uh, it's always a, it's, it's a journey which we have started and, uh, you know, we're looking forward on how this can help us. And you spoke about AI as well, and I know the panel is about AI. I think uh, on CTV, uh, AI has been used since a while. I think it's just that, though it's just scratched the surface in that sense, I think there's a lot more possibilities that, that can happen with AI, and I'm sure we'll talk about that much more. But uh, all in all, yes, CTV is important uh, for us. So. Oh, thanks, thanks, Jatin. I think uh, what, you, what you rightly said is that I think for L'Oreal per se, and given the brands, uh, it's, it's like, you know, it's a boom, you know, something, because now it's nicely segmented audience where you can advertise. Uh, Uday, your point of view on CTV, more from the platform side, more from the content side, so let me give you an overall perspective. I think we are now a country of a billion screens. Uh, on the mobile side, we probably have about 750 million screens. And on the larger side, uh, we have about uh, you know 250 uh, million odd screens. Most of them are television screens. But you know, uh, 
uh, the CTV screens are pro probably about 40 million. You know, that's the number that's uh, maybe the consensus number. But if you look at the larger picture, you've got uh, a fairly large number of screens, a billion screens out there, and 40 million are really connected. What happens with AI and if you layer the intelligent layer or, or the intelligent layer that's coming in, I think two things are going to fundamentally change. One, I think the content and advertising creating becomes very different. Uh, AI changes the way we create content. AI changes the way we create advertising. Uh, and I think the economics of that business of creating ads and creating content is going to go through a significant change with generative AI. Uh, generative AI fundamentally changes the way we, are, we will be able to create content. It may not be very visible to everybody today, but that's the promise of generative AI. So whether it is music, whether it is short form video, whether it is still images, I think we are up for major disruption because of generative AI. So I think that is one side of the equation. The other side of the equation is going to be because of a screen which is now an intelligent screen compared to linear television. And you have far more access to cohorts, you have far more in access to information, you have far more access to what the consumer is doing Will you be able to target better? Will you be able to get more knowledge, information, much more than what linear television was able to give you? And will that change the way you target advertising? So can you fundamentally change the way people were advertising on TV? And remember, on TV when you were advertising, you were trying to go for a large reach. You were trying to go for volume. With CTV, it will change and with data layers built on CTV, it will completely change because you'll get very relevant cohorts and your advertising media planning will change significantly. Because you can then target geography, you can target location, you can target customers, you can target the way they behave, the way they buy, what is their other interaction, what else do they do. And therefore, I think media planners and marketing uh, businesses will change because the way you create data lakes at your end, how do you create information layers at your end for the brands will fundamentally change. So I think media uh, or, or marketing or CMOs, their role will become very different. And I would imagine a lot of their role will become data officers and not so much marketing officers. You know, marketing will become an outcome and what you're doing with that data. And that data is going to come from multiple sources. So how do you create, how do you become the custodian of the customer's data in your organization and build intelligence? So I think ad tech by itself will change. A lot of ad tech today is managed by the advertising agencies and platforms a lot of ad tech I think will move into companies and at brand level. And I think that will change the way CMOs, uh, you know, target ads and the way they behave and the way they spend time today, I think fun will fundamentally change. So for me, two things are going to change. One, to summarize, one, given the number of CTV screens moves at which you're moving, uh, generative AI will change the way we create ads the sharpness at which we can create ads and the number of campaigns that we can create significantly changes because the economics changes there. I think on the advertising side and the technology layer and the, the, the marketing people will have to become tech people or semi-tech people and I think there how you handle data and how you manage your marketing plans and how you manage your media plans will fundamentally change uh, and therefore, I think we are up for a huge disruption in this space. Oh, interesting, very interesting. Uh, Abhishek, if you can, like, you know, just, just give a perspective on the landscape of CTV. How do you expect it? It's growing rapidly. Will this growth continue to happen? What is your sort of thoughts on that? So, um, if you look at uh, CTV, uh, immediate prominent tag that comes to it is it is affluent audiences or it is it is the well-to-do audiences, et cetera. And now 
um, CTV kind of grew so much that you had to layer out a separate audience layer called 4K audiences now, to s because just the bracket of CTV was not enough. I think fundamentally we got that one tag kind of wrong. It was not just affluent. It was more of an early adopter audience. TV was easy to adopt people where you could go to a shop and buy TV, etc. But it took fundamentally a different nature of a person to say, okay, I want different apps. I actually consume YouTube on my phone. Should I do it on my TV as well? Right? Uh, so it took an early adopter audience who thinks different to buy, buy this TV, buy this connected TV for the family. Right? So that's maybe a s certain class of brands who are looking at that psychographic of audiences. Maybe CTV is the right choice for them in that sense. Right? They are no longer watching TV. That kind of class of audience is no longer watching TV. So I think just bracketing them by an income target is kind of false, is my early reading. Um, I think there was a beautiful session early on by, uh, 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 by EY, where um, the numbers were shown in terms of, uh, um, I, I believe, I thought they were conservative estimates uh, that uh, it's around 30 million and um, um, so on uh, in terms of households. Uh, but what we are seeing is that the scale, the growth has been phenomenal. Right? And uh, uh, I don't think there is going to be a differentiation of linear versus CTV. I think that's, um, it's an unnecessary dis uh, differentiation that has been a legacy. Um, ads can be programmatically targeted to linear TV also, maybe within the one year or so. Maybe it's already being done, right? Uh, it's very possibly easy to do something called a dynamic ad insertion into the TV feed, right? Uh, if I'm in, in collaboration with the broadcaster, right? Uh, if the various spots where the ads were to be shown, if that spot were to be programmatically released, right, to the digital advertiser, they could release on cleaner TV as well. I don't think we are making this, we are making this unnecessary uh, bifurcations because of a legacy reason. I don't think they'll be so differentiated anymore. So I just want to say, I think what, what, what Abhishek also spoke about is actually interesting is also to understand that a lot of people who are actually watching an ad on connected TV might not even know that they're watching an ad on connected TV because that's what we've also seen when we're doing consumer studies, etc. Is like if you ask them where you have seen an ad, they normally end up saying it's TV, but they have not realized that it's, it's connected TV that they're watching. So there also lies the, lies the crux. So I think the 30 million estimate, I think also, yes, it's connections that are there within the households, but I also feel that with the internet providers actually, with, with the internet connection, you're getting a free set-top box, connected TVs, etc. They're just going to, this is going to increase and the consumers also now understand that it's, it's also connected household. TV also, yeah. See, also, yeah, also, household. Household. also household. Yeah, yeah. household. See, uh, when you, it's not an apples to apples comparison with a small screen. A small screen is an individual uh, connection, you're watching it yourself, you very rarely share it. But this is, an uh, this is a full household. Yeah. So, there is not one viewer, so if there are 30 or 40 million homes, there are probably two, two and a half people watching it, you know. True. So it's True. slightly different in terms of apples to apples comparison. But, you know, taking his point, I think, uh, and I differ from what he's saying, uh, linear TV, you can do programmatic. It's not apples to apples comparison. No, so what Uday, you can we'll, do with we'll, AI yeah. is an absolutely different <laughs> one, but that's a different concept. No, we'll we'll come there. We'll come there. I I, I think uh, we'll we'll get uh, Raghavendra to like you know just yeah. give his initial thoughts because I think in the corridor you told me something which was quite interesting. Yeah, so yeah. We'd love See, to hear that. Uh, I want to say FMCG is the place where the any medium anything do make it sexy. Okay, if FMCG can follow it, that means that medium has arrived. So if you ask us now. Uh, is connected TV happened? Yes, FMCG is on it, so that means it has happened. So, are you sad? Yeah, definitely very sad. Okay, why are we sad? Okay, so we go and ask the customer. We are FMCG is dependent on TV. So, what are the challenges of TV? So that should get addressed in when I come to connected TV. So you go and ask two more TG. My planner says no, I can't handle it. So we are waiting for AI. We are waiting for machine learning. This should revolutionize how an FMCG intends to build it. So you look at the top funnel, you look at the mid funnel, you look at the bottom funnel. Connected TV is an answer to it. And look at what's happening today. The previous slide said that 72% is male audience. All of us know that we, in a FMCG world, if somebody would give me a gross error to that extent, because we know TV is led by who is the consumer over there. Obviously, you took the news is a different point of view. So from a FMCG point of view, it is like, yes, it is big, but it is like a small kid in the candy room. Our hands are tied. 
you can't touch any goodies over there and just stay there and yeah it is good that's our point of view so uh, uh, raghavender uh, from your point of view when when like like just what we heard what jatin was saying that to him it seems like you know i've got a ready segmented premium audience which i can advertise to from your point of view you're saying that because i want to reach out to many people uh, this is not really that lucrative audience am i right yeah see uh, it's a nomenclature it's a premium but uh, uh, somebody said hd versus hd hd availability is not a question of premium today connectivity is premium because of the availability point of view mobile was not available hence the video was a premium so we paid the premium we fmcg are we are very we are very clear we go where the audiences are okay today connected tv is the audience where we are but we we go and buy connected tv is so much restrictions to say that we not necessarily getting the uh, benefits of the digital version of it okay so we don't necessarily call it as premium but we are saying that yes if i have a premium brand because it is available at a particular niche we use it nothing rocket science about it uh, uh, nothing great like if you know z uh, hd versus a regular we pay pittance to a sd versus hd why do we so because we're chasing the audience okay so it's just a question of time so the answer to this lies in how the ai will open up the three funnels we said future lies in where amazon is going to answer it future lies how jio is going to answer it future with all the 44 uh, ott platform as against the numbers quoted as a two ott platform okay so 44 platforms have to solve this issue for us as to how do they solve the three funnel issue ai ml is the reason where fmcg will smile but it is yet to happen that's my so point. part of the um, uh, thing that he brought about was the uh, limited supply uh, often gets conflated with being premium yeah. right uh, uh, netflix has recently opened up ad tiers right in uh, us or uh, in couple of ma- markets right so cpms there are roughly about 55 dollars like unheard of rates right so and they themselves are admitting that we are also doing a price discovery mm. right and uh, uh, the likes of trade desk etc say that okay once these guys also get added to the overall programmatic mix or overall inventory mix their rates will also come down but i think we make this mistake of limited supply equal to premium yeah no i i, so I thought it was to, more about a mindset handle, just uh, to talk about premium sure. i think uh, ctv is no more premium yeah okay ctv is the natural mm, purchase now because it's available at what 20000 30000 rupees yeah so there is no price differentiation when you are going to buy a replacement tv see today people are buying the next replacement tv they are not adding more tvs so if you are buying a replacement tv in your house you are naturally buying a ctv so this is all the new 10 15 million tvs that are getting bought every day or every year are coming out as ctvs because you know when the consumer is going and he's looking at a non ctv versus ctv the price difference is zero he's saying i'm buy a ctv so i don't think today whatever ctv is coming is genuinely premium is just replacement demand coming into the market it's only and and my belief is the only reason why it's it's in short demand today is one the size is small second the marketers have more information on the consumer versus the linear tv god god so uh, uh, jatin coming back to you and uh, you know while what what we've just discussed is that at one point we are saying that you know there is there is a segmented audience but at the other end like you know we, we are saying that it's not premium what is your view point about this audience how do you analyze it i think again you know it's is this nomenclature that that sort of comes into play as to premium versus non premium how from f- how i see it and how loreal also sees it i mean in in the spectrum of the of the products that we advertise you have a you will have a 600 rupee serum which is a garnier serum and you'll have a 6999 rupee serum which is a long com serum you know so that's sort of the uh the bread that the the that that we hold right but then again it's also the audience that you're looking at you know it's uh, nowhere is uh, uh, are we saying that someone who is on linear tv is not not premium and someone who's on ctv is premium it's also the consumer habit that has sort of come in right so for us our audience is is that girl is that woman who is on ctv who is on the phone who is spending sort of i don't know 8 to 10 hours on on digital watching ott uh, etc as opposed to 
uh, on linear TV where you where we might in a household might have a family watching something and uh, sort of an ad running there. So there's a lot of leakage that sort of happens uh, happens on linear TV for us as well. Uh, so for us, that's where it's where the consumer is to what the panel was also saying. And for us, that's where our consumer is uh, honestly honestly right now. You know, and and for us. Um, uh, it, it plays a very important role. I also think that, I mean, we are speaking about AI in this case. I think uh, AI and CTV also, I think all the CTV uh, OTT platforms that are there are already using AI quite a lot. I mean, the fact that there is content that is suggested after what you're watching comes into play, there is some level of AI that's already running, right? But I think the, the improvement that can happen in terms of this is how it can also help content creators and you know people who are making these shows etc to sort of predict what's going to happen in the next one two years or three years by looking at the kind of content the audience is sort of uh, taking in and you know that can sort of also help uh, content production houses to come and speak to advertisers like us to say you know we are seeing something that's going to come come in the next year year and a half and L'Oreal can be a great partner to sort of work with on a, on a show that we are creating or on, 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 on a specific audience that we want to talk to. You know, that can, be, that can be something that can be very interesting. I also feel, I mean, that the AI future is, uh, no one can predict it, <laughs> let's put it that way. I mean, uh, what's stopping from, uh, you know, AI helping, uh, again, uh, to people to sort of make different versions of the same TV show and running it basis who's choosing the profile and then ads running on it uh, basis that, you know. So uh, there's quite a lot that can happen. This, this duo of precision when it comes to digital and CTV layered with the, the data knowledge that, that the production houses hold and that the OTT holds can really help uh, advertisers and, and brands to sort of, let's put it this way, not really irritate the consumer when they're sort of watching the, the ad because they know that the ad that they're seeing is something that they really really want to see and want to know more of, so. Interesting. Uh, Uday, would you want to build on what he just said and specifically from the content side? So, like, you know, today, uh, curation is happening by the OTT players, so whatever content they have, but how will this get better w once the application of AI, the machine learns but more and more, and even from a content side? So I think the there are two ways of looking at it. One is there is premium content that is getting built, which is primarily going behind a paywall and going at subscription. I think that one part is, is going to continue. That premium content will remain as it is. I don't think that's getting disrupted very quickly. I think the AI will disrupt the short content part and the creator economy part. Uh, I think the challenge for marketers is going to be how do I harness generative AI and how do I harness the overlap of generative AI creators and the brand to be able to create enough content for sharper niches that are emerging. Like he said, you know, they've got serum across price points. How do you work with content creators and how do you use generative AI to be able to do it. You know, there are some very interesting use cases now coming up in e-commerce, for example, you know, where people are using uh, generative AI to create images and create short clips and stuff like that. Uh, music is the next thing that's going to get uh, democratized. I think if today marketers starts and agencies start spending time on building competence on generative AI, I think the amount of creative that you can create and position it directly for the audiences through the right influencers mm -hmm. and through the right content creators, that short form content is going to get disrupted significantly. And I think given we had a panelist from or, or a panel on YouTube right now or a speaker from YouTube, I think that is where we will see the first round of disruption happening or whether it's YouTube or social media or Facebook or wherever, where short videos will get disrupted first. So my suggestion to agencies and brands is it's the first thing that you need to do is to build competence on AI, get information on how you can create multiple ads and you know the cost of creating ads is going to fundamentally change. Uh, you know, today most advertisers will tell you it costs crores of rupees to create an ad. I think 
my feel is in a few years we, it will almost become free okay what internet and what you know broadband did to internet it made it free i think generative ai will make content free it's a scary thought for most of us but if short form content and clips becomes free then the potential for marketers is humongous because then you can almost create create content for specific audiences without the cost of creating it and i think that's the disruption that ai will do uh, there is a disruption on targeting which is very obvious to everybody here yeah. because of the amount of data but i think the real disruption we will see is on generative ai and content my suggestion to most cmos today would be focus on creating competence in generative ai and ad agencies should try and see how they can change the way they create ads true and uh, that that probably i'm i'm just just digressing a little abhishek and your your viewpoint when you like you know sort of consult uh, your your clients do you believe that connected tv is is like not right now but over a period of time when it truly becomes connected when i'm saying connected is that uh, you know top funnel middle funnel bottom funnel you know i watch and i watch some content i i like something i can buy you know and that whole space so what is your view point on that is it is it one solution for all currently we are all struggling to build a brands then to build consideration and then finally the sale so it's all three different platforms three different sets of data but will this like you know probably be the solution for us i think we are kind of already there um, um, see uh, uh, the very fact that you're signing with with the same set of ids um, your um, your google id or uh, whatever right or your phone number and so on right so your your youtube your netflix whatever you're viewing is already connected to everything else that you're uh, working on the internet for right uh, wherever you are purchasing wherever you are viewing ads or whatever so now um, i'll take it a step further now uh, uh, your ctv ip address etc there are people who are generally uh, aware of which are, which nature area it is which pin code it is right uh, maybe even which apartment it is right the ad can probably follow you from the ctv to your phone to the doh of your apartment and so on and to the mobile that you are going on the commute so i i think that truly connected thing is already there it's a quite dystopian if you think about it but it's already there interesting and uh, raghavender your <laughs> no i i there's a very nice point what you said i want to tell you this see look at from a tv point of view agar aapke ghar mein tv nahi to aapka kursi kidhar dekhega it is as important as that okay. <laughs> so finally tv had its own challenges if you go and look at it what is being viewed okay so there is one two types of everybody will know in stream and in feed in stream basically you cannot do anything whatever is there you are supposed to see that's how tv suffered you have to watch 10 minutes of advertisement to see some amount of content so we got fed up with tv fmcg had challenges okay so we came to connected tv look at here still i am forcing a skippable non skippable ad which will force you to as a user you are not supposed to do anything you will be forced to see that this is called in stream advertising then come there is in feed such a beautiful concept where if you had typed something which is like i want to watch romance there is something available on romance you are not supposed to you are not, you are not forced on that content if you like it you can watch it that's where when he says there is a content revolution when he says this is the future but all our mechanisms and everything is on this in stream which is going to say we buy impression with the largest acceptable currency though we talk of clicks and response later so this impression is what nothing but thumbnail exposure so this entire opportunity called what is available in feed which will be a big thing in a connected tv we are not getting people to come and talk to us okay as a marketer we are so lazy guys we we'll say we bought cpms and we are done with it okay so that's where the catch is so i uh, I'll, i'll 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 another sort of question to it because from all the points which you are making you are pretty happy with linear tv so <laughs> <laughs> we are not, not happy, happy with linear tv hence we are celebrating connected yeah. tv but we are gripping yeah. out connected tv is the right way god god uh last question before like you know sort of we open it up to the audience uh what i would like you know want each of you all to do okay is one today 
give or take, we are sitting at 30 million, 40 million uh, sort of uh, connected TVs. What do you anticipate, like, you know, by, by 25? say, end of 25, okay? Are we, are we talking about numbers which are, you know, which is going to grow at this rate and, you know, that 25, like, like Uday mentioned that, you know, every new TV is possibly a connected TV, a smart TV. But will this give rise to cord cutters? And therefore, like, you know, are we seeing the death of linear TV in the next couple of years? I think uh, death of linear TV in two years, no. Uh, for whatever it's worth, linear TV is there to stay. Uh, we are a big country, we are a diverse country, it's uh, very different from, uh, from other countries in the world. Uh, but when it comes to the adoption of CTV and cord cutters, that is going to grow, is, is what we feel as L'Oreal and personally as well. I think in the next couple of years, this number should be double. Uh, 2025 should be around 60, 65 uh, million. Again, households, right? It's not only, it's not only one user in that sense. So, um, uh, for sure, uh, the the, the future is bright. The future is fast for for connected TV. I just also wanted to make one point in this case. You know, uh, to what Raghavinder also said. I think it's also about how you plan on CTV. You know, it's not as simple as easy as it was when yeah. linear TV or as easy when you're doing anything on say a meta Google where you're just doing say an RNF, okay, it's done uh, kind of a thing. I think we also need to push as advertisers, our partners to say what are other capabilities that comes through AI to use CTV in a much better way. The fact that we are already saying that these 65 odd million households by 2025 will have more than three or four profiles on every OTT platform that you have. So how can I target basis, not only the show that I'm watching, but can AI also make me understand that if someone's seen a certain profile, the ad that I run on that same show will be different from uh, from the show that someone else in the in the household is watching, right? So I think those are the things that at both ends, uh, you know, the OTT platforms, the, the partners are going to work on and make sure that happens. But for us, uh, to answer it again, death of linear TV, no. Uh, the growth of uh, CTV with AI, 100% for sure. Uh, I, I, I had read an interesting report which basically uh, put like, you know, just TV and they put connected TV on the top with like 25, 30 million homes and then pay TV and FTA. What the numbers showed that quarter on quarter, pay TV is declining by a million homes. Connected TV is growing and FTA is growing. So uh, if, if, if I were to just go by what you said, and you know, like today we are at 30 million, and let's say end of next year we are at 60, 70 million. It's a large, large base. And this growth is going to come on the back of pay TV. You know, so your pay TV will be equal to approximately to connected TV. So, so that's where, like, you know, my, my question as an advertiser is that, you know, now you currently, like, you know, we, we were discussing, it might be premium audience, it might be mindset audience, or whatever. It's a small, nice base to advertise, but the moment it becomes 50, 60, you'll have to make choices. 100%. I think it's also about how uh, CTV is sort of built on a base of these ecosystems that are coming out, right? It's, it's geo, let's take geo for example, right? It's, it's not only the, that connected TV or that set-top box. You're taking geo home, you're taking the internet first, then they're telling you to make sure that you get into their ecosystem. Then they're making sure that you're also going to run ads across their ecosystem and not only on CTV. That's the same with Amazon, for example. I have a fire stake and you have uh, the Amazon DSP, you have Airtel. You know, the, the fact that the ecosystems are going to get built, there is uh, no way that we are going to be off or ignore the, the, the revolution that's happening when it comes to CTV, for sure. Got it. Uh, Uday, what's your point of view on this ecosystem? So I think we are we're going to make life of CMOs very difficult. And just stepping back and looking at 10 years back and 10 years ahead. 10 years back, and I'm being very simplistic, you know, excuse my simplicity, you would create one ad campaign and you would run the still of that on print and you'll run the motion picture of that on TV. And most CMOs are very happy. I have my ads out there. Sales have happened. How much wastage? I don't know. Somebody told me that X number of wastage because there was X number of sample boxes and some uh, newspaper readership survey. And you were happy with what came out. Let's move forward. You will probably, for the same creative or for the same brand, have 500 different creatives. 
for 500 different cohorts running on five, maybe X number of platforms, and you'll have data all, for all of that that you need to analyze in real time and report. Yeah. Okay, so the job of this marketer changes fundamentally. And I don't think too many people understand what's happening here. Because the disruption is, you know, humongous. It's not, it, it's a tectonic shift in the way we do marketing. Because if the advertising changes and creatives change, platforms on which you are serving and the way you are serving changes, you're fundamentally changing the landscape. And you have to then report data in real time for each region, for each product, for each SKU, for each location. Because that will what be, that's what will be needed. Because you've got, you know, in India we probably have 400 Indias. And each region will behave differently. You'll have different creatives for different products for each region in different languages. And the performance of that will be measured separately. So we're getting into a very different uncharted territory. And we'll have to do it with intelligent data analytics and performance. And I think the ad tech that we use today is going to change fundamentally. And the way CMOs talk and the way CMOs analyze their data will change significantly. So we are getting into a very uncharted territory. No, I, I, I think uh, we would love to have a, a creative person in this panel uh, because we are all very analytical uh, in, in our approach. Uh, to see that what they have to say when, you know, like I have to make 500 copies and 500 ads, uh, but you know, how will they apply it? Uh, but that's for a different day. Uh, Abhishek, uh, your viewpoint in terms of futuristic, you know, what are we envisaging in the next couple of years? So, uh, see, when it comes to uh, generative AI creating these multiple creatives and copies, etc., one of the aspects that uh, uh, becomes a responsibility for ad tech for agencies, for brands is to uh, tell the customer that uh, in case anything has been synthetically created, right, has this been conveyed to the uh, end consumer as well, right? So uh, uh, people at, uh, I mean, we are already past that uncanny valley right now where you can distinguish whether this is an AI generated content or not. If you look at uh, things from Sora and so on, the video. Right? It, it looks damn real. I mean, it, uh, maybe it looks more real than an authentically created product produced video. Right? So now, um, there have been certain initiatives, uh, uh, Adobe, uh, uh, Google, uh, Arm, etc. They have created something called um, Coalition for Content Provenance in US. Right? To, uh, like, uh, because they are involved in the JPUs, they are involved in the technology that creates the, the generative AI piece as well. So they're able to watermark content. They're able to even ask if I'm a YouTube content creator, when I'm uploading something, okay, does this have any synthetically created content in it, right? So self-declaration of sorts. And they're also quite uh, understandable in the sense that you could use it to airbrush or beautify or basic corrections, etc. They're okay with that. If you're, it's in any way misleading. It's in any way, for example, creating a deep fake, right? Uh, or it is uh, uh, creating an alarming situation. For example, one of the examples that the quote is, uh, there's a realistic video of a tornado moving into a city. But there's, a no tor there's nothing that's happened, right? Now, these kind of things merit a warning to the consumer, right? And this will, going forward, be like just how you see smoking is injurious to health, right? This video has been created by AI. Please use it as you, at your discretion. This is going to be there for sure. Interesting, very interesting. And, and your, your viewpoint in terms of uh, the, the, the entire audience base, like, like what, what Jatin spoke about, Uday, like how, how would you see, foresee that? You know, one, we are saying that you'll have to make multiple creators, multiple cohorts, you know, and, and, and real-time data. Uh, how, do you, how do you envisage that and how do you advise your clients to manage that? See, I think, um, uh, while I say I'm a digital marketer, I would uh, love to advocate for precision targeting. But uh, I, I think there's this nice quote that goes, uh, precision targeting gets you customers, right? Um, overall mass targeting creates customers, <coughs> right? I think we might end up um, losing or uh, missing out creating the next customer 
if you're going behind our own biases and seeking out the same targets and the same audiences again and again. Because we know that 10 million crowd will buy it. The 100 million crowd might buy it. But what about beyond that? Right? Are we, uh, there is a segment that people call it the California crowd in India. Right? If every ad is going to be targeted to the same audience again and again, are we missing out creating the next generation of customers? Are they not going to love your brand going forward because they've never seen your ad? Because they were never in that AI created cohort? I think these are some questions that we need to think of. No, that's, that's interesting. And, and uh, Raghavinder, I would love your views on that. Where, you know, when I'm also dealing with a lot of my clients, uh, while precision, digital, all that is making a lot of sense, but more and more we feel that, you know, it's better to go on to TV, linear TV, better to go on print, because at least I get a lot of feedback, you know, that, oh, my brand is visible, because, because we've seen that, you know, that though we spend a lot of money, a lot of times that visibility quotient is missing. So what's your view in terms of precision versus this whole, you know, mass targeting? Yeah. Uh, Yesterday, I was listening to uh, Wharton's school professor, uh, uh, Peter Federer. Beautifully, he was putting it. See, connected TV is today is in a product-oriented approach. It's a necessary work stage life. It has to have a product stage. We have got a lot of features. We have got a lot of things which are happening over there. But necessarily, this should move into consumer-centric approach. But if you go and talk to any of the uh, things which are available on connected TV, it has not evolved itself to see from a consumer point of view. One of the biggest shock was that when I first installed the OTT, I think I got Tata Play, then I got Geo Cinema. It just moved from Tata Play where I'm watching my regular uh, open it, it's a blank. Screen is staring at you, you are scaring at it. I don't know what happened. This is a so-called big time connected TV. Why it is blank? Probably I moved from a TV cinema, it took me time to digest it. Okay. So in a consumer-centric approach, this connected TV has to evolve itself to be a part of the process, which is yet to happen. It is necessarily, we have to come to that scheme to happen. Let's make it very clear, in this room, television audience measurement is dead and gone. So we know that NCC has died. Still yesterday, Disney Hotstar is still presented to me, NCC is ABC, equal proportion. It died, okay? But as the same audience, they have got around, he was, they were going 84 uh, audience segments to talk to. But the so-called signals, how do we make it? And how do we evolve a solution to come on to it is the reason. So is the precision uh, versus non? No, that's not the debate here. As a marketeer, there is a path for us to build communication on a consumer-centric approach. There is no two ways about it. We have to evolve that right approach to do it, okay? When there is a declared a death sentence given on NCCS, still we are reporting it as a parameter to buy. Why? Because the signals are yet to be captured. Connected TV has to evolve. Geo TV, um, Mini TV on Amazon, these are all happening right at your uh, tips. If you don't learn today, we'll pay a big price at a later stage to get it right for us. That's what I say. Uh, another uh, like sort of interesting observation which I personally feel is that uh, surfing the net or surfing the TV. It's very difficult with connected yes. TV to get out of one app and get yes. into an, another app. And that, that, that brings me to one point which I would love to discuss is that given that, you know, uh, generally now that whole time span is, is, is becoming important. People like, if your content doesn't catch you in two minutes, you're gone. Uh, with these challenges which the platform is offering as connected TV, you know, it's not easy to surf. You know, so I get onto a content, I want to move out. Like the normal thing we used to do while watching TV, while watching cricket, you're watching, the ad comes and you go somewhere else and come back. That seems to be quite complicated. Any views on that in terms of, you know, how, how this is going to be like sort of managed? I think I um, honestly miss surfing, right? There is, there is a whimsy to it. You could discover a new program, you could discover new content, etc. Now, um, Netflix, for example, shares stats that, um, um, I mean, this was a few years ago. Now it's probably increased few uh, few more percentage points. Greater than 80% of people just pick the recommendation that's shown to them, mm. right? Now it's probably even higher. It's close to 90% now, right? And they have taken AI to generate these recommendations down to they know that there are two or three viewers using the same account. They would have created a cluster using AI for say the husband, the wife, the kid, etc. There's a separate kids cohort as well. Now. Does this mean that we're not going to discover any new programs of our own in that sense? Uh, or it is just, we're going down that rabbit hole of, okay, this 
recommend it to me, I'm going to watch it. Right? I think we're missing that whimsy factor of discovering new content. Uh, my mother, for example, is a um, uh, avid TV watcher, right? The same content is there on OTTs. She finds it hard to check it, and I have to set it up and so on. But it is a very clunky experience. I think the more we run away from cable, somehow we cable comes back to us in some way. The good features of cable, I think, will come back to CTV. Good, good. So, so, so I'm the other extreme of the spectrum. So, so let me talk from the other side. Uh, I, I, I mean, we can take a poll here. How many people have discovered new content after CTV has happened? I mean, you have discovered weird stuff. I and mean, if I just take an audience here, you know, everybody is watching different stuff. Somebody is watching Korean stuff. Somebody is watching, uh, you know, uh, stuff from Turkey, Turkish content. Everybody here in this room would be watching different stuff. And look at from the era of television where at 9.30 in the evening, everybody was watching CID or Crime Patrol. So, you know, we've moved away from watching one thing that was decided by an editor sitting in some uh, broadcast company saying, this is the right time for everybody in this room to watch one program. And now, everybody in this room at 9.30 is watching something different and discovering new content every day. So habits will change. Screens and technologies will make people change habits. So we, we have to get used to it. That's the reality, and which is why advertisers and platforms have to change. Consumers will adopt technology, and we have to follow them. Yes. I don't think we can stop consumers from saying, I'm going to watch a Turkish show, and somebody's going to watch a Korean show, and somebody's going to watch a uh, you know, Punjabi show, and somebody watching a Malayalam movie who's never seen or knows Malayalam. That can only happen in today's environment. So I think we are evolving as content viewers. And that's a challenge for marketers to say, how do I then target that audience? We can't run away from that challenge. And that's the data challenge. That's the challenge of learning how to target that audience who's going to be so diverse. You know, there are 200 people sitting here. Each one watches different content. How do we as marketers reach out to each one and, uh, you know, target something differently? So that's the challenge. The challenge is not you know, can we go back to the linear age? That is over and done. Jatan, any last words? No, I, I think I agree with that. I think the example that uh, Abhishek also spoke about, I think for me personally, it's been very different. The day I've, it took me so much time to convince my mom to have connected TV at home. And I think she's the happiest now that she can watch her show whenever she wants. And that has now enabled, to dis enabled her to discover these long format shows on say a Sony Live or, or on a Netflix where to be honest, earlier she used to only watch Daily Soaps, so I'm also personally very happy that she's not watching only Daily Soaps anymore. But uh, no, uh, in terms of last thoughts, I think, uh, uh, you know, everyone spoke about how it's important when it comes to, uh, comes to targeting audiences and how AI can help, uh, uh, help all these things happen. Uh, I think uh, when it comes to the capabilities of what CTV into AI can do, as a duo together, we have only scratched the surface. I think uh, I, I spoke about the fact that, you know, content suggestions is something that everyone was so happy about when it came out to say, you know, I'm just surfing and I saw something else, so they're telling me to watch something else. And I've discovered new shows, everyone was like, that, that's AI. But I think um, uh, how, uh, uh, you know, OTT platforms manage to give more signals, you know, and then we keep consumers at the forefront of planning it'll totally change the game. Uh, you know, it's possible that two people are watching the same show and there are different ads running because they're watching from different profiles. You know, I don't know if that's, uh, how much of a leeway have we made onto that. There's one small example, but we've only scratched the surface and there's, there's lots more to come for sure. Sure. I, uh, I think in the interest of time, uh, we'll, but very, very interesting session. I, I think lots and lots of learning. Uh, We've, we've like gone from diversified points uh, and, and as, as you rightly said, that we've just scratched the surface. We'll just open it up for the audience if there's any specific question or anything like that. Yeah.
your products are not integrated in a smart way. That is a problem what we face while we write uh, scripts for episodes. We get brand briefs where they don't allow us to integrate in a way that it uh, doesn't look forced. Right? I did a show and uh, there are some national brands whose briefs I got to integrate in the show. But it was a copy, not a script. Now when you are integrating a brand in a show, you need a script for that. You can't uh, uh, get a copy which was written for a social media or a print media to be integrated on a television. So why this is happening a lot of time that uh, brands uh, send their briefs and they want as it is to be put, which is not possible in a TV show. It has to be written in a form of script where uh, it looks like it is going seamlessly. It doesn't look forced. Because that breaks the link also. So you would uh, uh, agree because you have been doing non-fiction shows on Sony and this uh, happens a lot. So I'll tell you the fundamental challenge and this is a conflict that is not easy to resolve. Okay, uh, the brand has very strict guidelines mm -hmm. and a very strict format in which it wants its brand to be visible. The script writer has no idea what the brand thought is. Okay. And, and we are being honest here. The script writer comes from his story point of view. Now, there is very little meeting ground. Both are very difficult people at the end of the day. So the advertiser wants done his way. So it's my way or highway. And the script writer says, no, it's my way or highway. So there will be a conflict here. And I think the strongest one wins, which is the advertiser. So you have to adjust with the advertiser. Can I just answer that though? You know, I, I, it's it's a fair question, and yes, uh, what they're saying is also also absolutely right. That there's always this uh, this dichotomy that keeps on happening, and the and the debate. But I'll just give you a, an example from L'Oreal. Right? You know, everyone. I don't know how many people saw it, but Archie's on Netflix. Uh, Maybelline was one of the one of the sort of the uh, tie up that we had done with the movie. Now, the reason that happened was it seamlessly fit in the story. It was 1960s, uh, Maybelline was there. Uh, you know, you see the, the, the kind of the cast it was, Anglo-Indian, etc. It, it fit in the, in the ecosystem, right? So, when there is something that fits the bill, uh, you will always see brands also adjusting, making sure that it happens. But at the same time, whatever, however, whatever happened on that movie, you had Skybags also sort of <laughs> working with them. So, okay, they, it's, it's, it's a call that, that was taken there. But for me, Maybelline was a way better fit in the movie. It just came on so seamlessly. And, you know, to push that, we actually had an Archie's collection also in the market because we knew that's, that's how it works. So, yes, it's always a, it's always a debate. But, uh, you know, when... It's a very when, tough balance. Yeah, it's a when, very tough balance. When it's right, it's right. You know, there is uh, no two ways about it. Sure, I think uh, in bold it's just saying time's up. <laughs> so, uh, but thanks a lot. Thank thanks you, thanks you so much. Really, really, really enjoyable. Thank you. It was a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you.